Come on, man. 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 You knew it was coming this year. It's not a surprise. You knew I had my eyes on you. You knew I had my camera on you. And yet you still filled up my video camera with all kinds of segments for Come On Man. But I'm not complaining. I don't have to explain it this year. You know what's going on. And you know what? It's a new year. It's 2013 and I've got a goal. I don't like to make new resolutions, but I do like to make goals. My goal this year is that Come On Man will go viral. You know what? It's going to be, you know, in 2012 there's this thing called Gangnam Style that went viral. In 2013, it's going to be, come on, man, it goes viral. I'm even going to make up a dance for it. It goes like this. You guys, I want, you, I want to see you doing it at your senior prom. Come on, man. Come on, man. So, without further ado, let's get it started with 2012, 2013 version of Western Isle Man's Come On, Man. We're going to start out this year's version of Come On, Man with a riddle. And it's a holiday riddle, and here it goes. What do you get when you cross the wrapper, Vanilla Ice, with Santa Claus, and then with Warrior Head Coach Jeff Snuffer. And the lesson to be learned there, Coach Snuffer, is don't let yourself get tagged on Facebook wearing a wife beater and a Santa hat. Snuffer Claus, come on, man! To those of us who love football, the football field itself is an absolutely beautiful place, a magical place. And there's nothing more special than, you know, early in the season, walking out onto that field, that perfect manicured grass with the lines painted just perfectly, you know, ever so straight, ever so white. And those lines are extremely important because football is truly a game of inches. You know, an inch could be the difference between a touchdown and a turnover and, you know, a first down and a no down. And let's, let me show you something, how good we have it here at Western Islands. This is what our field looks like. And now here's another example from one of our other schools within the county that's our rivals. And you know what? They obviously take the exact same precautions and care of their football field. Here's an example. Just take a look at this. It's perfect. Yeah, that's a real head scratcher for this one. I've just got to say, come on, Cavs. This was the Cummings field. Boy, that's, we won't even go there. Something I just love about Western Alamance football is our toughness. Our players are not only mentally tough, but they're also physically tough. You get them out on the field, and they're just beasts. You know, they give 110%, and they're going to hit you and smack you in the mouth. Now, one of the guys that I think is the toughest out there, I nicknamed him the Manimal, because he's half man, half animal, T.J. Harris, number 12. T.J. Was just goes crazy out on that field. He wants to rip your head off. Last year, I talked about T.J. being so tough on the fields, but we caught him on the sidelines doing a little dance and he didn't look so tough. So TJ, I thought this year maybe you'd be you know, a little more conscientious about your sideline activity, but I found out something, TJ. You like to be pampered. You like the, the dainty things in life. I think maybe for Christmas next year for your graduation, I'm gonna get you a, a coupon to, to, the, to the eye spa or something like that so you can be pampered like this. So TJ, you've gone up this year from sideline dancing to sideline massages. Okay, who am I to, to judge? You know, it's not my point. But talking about judging, you know, if you look a little bit closely at that video, you'll see John Hines is enjoying that. Coach John Hines is enjoying that just a little bit too much. So come on, Johnny, watch out. But TJ, you know, one thing I was wondering too is like, well, what else happens to TJ? What other special treatment does this man, the manimal, get? You know, and I'm thinking, do you get manicures and pedicures? So I followed, I followed TJ into the locker room, and I caught this picture of him getting a, you know, getting a pedi. And you know, when I saw that, I just had to ask myself, self, what in the world is the manimal doing getting a petty? What's going on with those feet of his? I had to zoom in and take a, look, take a closer look. And here's what I saw. Warning, you might want to turn away. Whew! And I thought my granny had some ugly feet. I just got one thing to say. I'm glad we looked at this thing after dinner instead of before dinner, because that would have, you know, taken away the appetite here. TJ, I got one thing to say to you, man, for all your pampering that you need. Come on, manimal! Hey, warrior football pa parents, I'm talking to you now. Hey, when you get to be our age, a problem I have, and maybe you do too, is you, you think you're cool, but you're really not. But I have come to learn that I'm really not cool, so I have to look to other people to, to determine if I'm being cool or not and see what they're doing and how they're acting. 
And the person I turn to on the warrior sidelines is the coach's daughter, Savannah Snuffer. She is the epitome of cool. If you don't believe me, just take a look at this picture. Hey, the Fonz. Come on, Savannah. Something I find interesting about football is how celebrations have changed over the years. By celebrations, I mean what the players do or what do the coaches do after a big play. Now, parents, you probably remember this. When, when we were young, when you scored a touchdown or did something good, it was a give me five. You know, it was, it was a, a low five. Give me five down here. Then it was a double five. Give me ten. Eventually, that evolved into the high five. You know, give me five up high. Um, somewhere along the line, things have changed in 2012. And now the thing to do is the flying chest bump or the flying hip bump where the two players run together and jump in the air and they, and they have to hit each other just ever so gently in, in, in order to, to celebrate the big play. Well, you know what? Some of our former players are, who are now assistant coaches decided they would get in on this act. And so here's some of the big guys, Coach Kaiser and Coach Black, and their attempt at a flying chest bump. <laughs> Whew, now that's a total relief that that thing was a, a total fail because I was a little bit worried about the impact of what would do to, to the rest of the silencer. I haven't seen that much fle flesh moving around since I, I watched a YouTube video of Honey Boo Boo doing a tap dance. Coach Kaiser, Coach Black, next year, if you're going to get us all excited about that impending collision, at least let your flesh come together. Come on, man! So as you can see, there's all kinds of things that take place down on the sidelines. And let's talk about another one. You know, probably 10, 15 years ago, this movie came out starring Woody Harrelson, and it was called White Men Can't Jump. I think I'm going to use this next video clip to make a new movie in 2013 called White Men Can't Dance. Mitchner, I don't know what's worse, that failed chess bump or your attempt at being a cheerleader. I'm not sure, but I got one thing to say. Come on, Mitch. While we're on a dancing theme for a while, let, let, let's stick with another one. You know, early in the season, one of the seniors really caught my attention on defense. It was number 20, Sam Foster. Because I like to give players a nickname, and, and, and to me, Sam reminded me of one of those little crabs you'd see on the beach, the little guys that pop up out of the hole in the sand, and they got legs that, in all directions, they can sort of like scurry around in all directions. They're called ghost crabs, and, and that's the way Sam played defense. He played like a ghost crab, because he had moves, he could move in any direction, you know, at the same time. And apparently the same is true with his dancing, is that if this is really dancing? I'm not sure. Take a look for yourself. Huh. Oh. Oh. There it is. Hey. Hey. Hmm. Well, Sam, if I had to sum that up in a word, I think that word would be disturbing. And you know what? I really don't know what was more disturbing. Your dancing. Or the guy shooting a video making all those grunt noises. Mmm, ah, you know, I got one thing to say to both of you guys. You know what it is. Come on, man. And apparently dancing is, is really the second most popular sport at Western Alamance. Here's another guy that likes to strut his stuff in the stands. Now, Charlie Harper, I don't know what you were going for right there. Were you looking for people to stuff dollar bills in your shirt? I don't know. But whatever I'm going to say is... Come on, man! Two of the more versatile guys on our team are, are a pair of juniors, Justin Wilson and Brock Dethridge. You know, both of them can play a variety of positions on offense and on defense. In fact, I don't think there's anything they can't do well. Um, so it was no surprise that when, when earlier this season, when it was Coach Hambright's birthday, that, that Justin and Brock were selected by their teammates to be the persons who would take the water bucket and unceremoniously dump it onto Coach Hambright and part of the celebration, part of the ritual of being a football player and a coach, you know, in a celebratory mood. So here's, take a look at our multi-talented superstars, Justin and Brock, trying to handle the water bucket. I just got to shake my head at that one. Justin and Brock, come on, you had a clean shot. You had a clean shot. I know this is football, but I'm going to use a basketball term here. Air bucket, air bucket. Not a drop on Coach Hambright, a poor defenseless old man. And you whiffed with the water bucket. Come on, man. 
I spoke earlier about one of my favorite tough guy defenders, TJ Harris. TJ likes to really lay the hits on the opponents. But one thing TJ hasn't learned is that it's not always the opponents that's laying out the licks. Take a look at this one. <laughs> That was one of the bigger hits of the year. And I don't know who gets it, TJ for being hit or Justin for hitting his own teammate. But just, come on, guys. Here's another example of two Warriors deciding to collide on the football field. And the common thread here is Justin Wilson. But Justin, guess what? I think this time, I think it's TJ actually paid Nigel to get a little revenge for himself. Wow, that was another big hit. And you know what the common theme is in these big hits? Justin Wilson. Justin, you're always running into people. Come on, man! This year's version of Come On, Man, you know, it wouldn't be complete unless I poked a little bit of fun at myself. You know, in order to do this, i got to set the stage. Hey, I want you to raise your hand out there if you've ever taken a psychology class. Okay. One thing you learn about in psychology class, if you've taken one, if you're going to take one, is one of the most famous psychiatrists of all time, Dr. Sigmund Freud. Dr. Freud is so famous that he even has a phrase that's named for him. And it's basically when you say something or do something that's unintentional, but Freud says everything happens for a reason and it comes out in your subconscious. And that thing is a Freudian slip. Well, this year I had my very own Freudian slip and it just so happens it occurred during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And here's what happened, true story. If you guys remember, I had some trouble posting video in October. Something went wrong with the iHi uploader. And there was a time, a few weeks where, back in October, when I had to actually upload my videos to, to YouTube and then put a link on the iHi site over to YouTube so you could see that. One day I was really frustrated with, with iHi because of these difficulties. And so I posted this little disclaimer, this little warning out on the iHi site to let you know what was going on. Keep in mind that this happened during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Did you catch that? YouBoob.com during Breast Cancer Awareness Month? A Freudian slip up there ever was when I confess. Thank goodness my wife caught that one before too many people saw it. At least I hope before too many people saw that. So just to me, come on, Kev. On iHi, we did introduce a new feature this year, a post-game uh, video show called The Warrior Wrap-Up. I hope you guys saw it and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, my friend Ricky Portella and I would get, get on the field immediately following the game and do a quick video segment and try and give you, you know, a rehash of the game, you know, some of the highlights and, and what we observed during the game. And we thought that we were really doing a service to the team, you know. But then after uh, paying a little bit of closer attention to some of our videos and looking around in the background, we sort of felt like Rodney Dangerfield, if you know what I mean. You guys know Rodney? No respect. No respect, I tell you. No respect. Here's a segment of Warrior Wrap-Up that took place during the Williams game, or just after the Williams game. One of our biggest wins of the year. And look at what these clowns are doing in the background while we're trying to be serious. It was 2002, last time we lost to Williams here. And it was Bo Jordan's freshman year. It was like 7-3 to three was the final score of that game. God, Bo Jordan. Bo Jordan must be 100 years old by now. It makes me feel old. I don't know about you. Um, let's talk. Props to our crowd. Oh, my goodness. Were, those, were they loud or what? Well, the Warrior crowd, they always travel great, especially this game. It's a a little bit special game, you know, crosstown rivals with, with uh, Williams. And uh, our student section was great tonight. The band was great. We had a great crowd. Absolutely. The game got off to a good start. Warriors got the ball, moved downfield methodically, really liked the mixture, pulled in Brock at quarterback as we got close to the goal line. Sam Foster, Charlie Harper, Brock Deathridge. Come on, man. Honestly, though, I can't complain too much about not getting any respect. You know, the respect I get is immense compared to some other people that are part of this football program. You know, the person that I think gets the least respect out of anybody is the coaching staff, and, and in particular, the offensive line coach. Now, we have a great one here in Coach Melton. But you know what? No matter what happens on a football team, the offensive line coach is going to get the blame. I mean, somebody throws an interception. Well, it's the offensive line fault. They didn't block well. Um, we... Fumble the ball. It's the offensive line fault. They didn't block well. You know, we score 50 points. Well, we should have scored 55, but the offensive line would have blocked on that one play. You know, it's so bad 
Even poor Coach Melton doesn't even get any respect from, from, from the little kids. Look at here. you got to look at this one. This is going to be a quick one, but take a real close look down you know, around uh, his thigh level and look at the little munchkins running around and the abuse he takes from his own daughter. And so after the lashing by his own daughter with the towel, he has to get saved by the coach's daughter, you know, little Sarah Snuffer. And, and you have to keep in mind, this is coming after the McMichael game when we won 66 to nothing. It's just no respect. No res I'm all for you, Coach Melton. I'm 100% behind you, and I understand what it takes. And i got one thing to say to those little munchkins. Come on, munchkins! Earlier in the video, we did kind of a look-alike segment where we had Savannah Snuffer in, hey, the Fonz, you know, looking like each other. I had another look-alike this year, and then this one actually struck me as funny. It happened on senior night. I want you to take a look at this. A young man, senior, couldn't play that night, Brad Reed. But take a look at Brad and just pay attention to his facial expression. Now think about it. Where have you seen that look before? Think back to the summer, Michaela Maroney, indifference, the Olympic medalist. She lost the gold and turned it up silver. Brad, this is your senior night. It's not the same thing as losing a gold medal. Put a smile on your face or a tear in your eye, but don't look like this. Come on, man. Here's another senior look-alike photo, but I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to tell you what I think it looks like. I'm going to let you be the judge. This happened even before the season started, back, you know, in, in the hot weather when the, the athletes that were out there, the football players and some other athletes were out there doing a, a car wash for FCA to run, raise money for summer camp. Take a look at senior offensive lineman Michael Bell as he's trying to raise business out on the street. Now, Michael, with that long hair and short shorts, I'm not sure exactly what you were selling out there, but you know what? It was effective. It caused me to come in and get a car wash. But next year, I know Michael's gone, but any of you guys that want to get out there and drum up some business for a car wash, let's at least keep the short shorts, okay? Come on, Bill. This season, on senior night, I decided to do things a little bit different. In seasons past, I would take uh, the microphone and interview the seniors and, and get their perspective on what's going on or what was going through their mind on senior night. And it was always a very emotional experience. This year, I decided to do something different, and I was just going to let them have free reign. Hey, these are big boys, well-versed highly educated. I'm just going to give them the microphone and give them the opportunity, 5, 10, 20, whatever it takes seconds, to say what's on their heart and their minds. Um, it was good from two points of view. Number one, I didn't have to come up with the questions. And number two, it provided me with plenty of fodder for come on, man, when I turn these guys loose. Take a look at this. Uh, Buster Ross, uh, senior number 56, offensive line. I just want to say it's been an honor to put on the, the blue and the gold. <coughs> Buster, 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 pay attention here. The blue and the gold? Seriously? It looks blue and white to me. Come on, man. But don't feel so bad, Buster. At least you got your name out right. Here's a couple of guys that forgot who they were. Hello. Wait, wait, wait. Introduce yourself. Hello. Wait, wait, wait. Introduce yourself. Senior right guard. Mm, hold on, hold on. I said right. Okay. Senior right. Senior right guard, Cody Rice. That was Sam Foster, otherwise known as, uh, and Cody Rice, otherwise known as, k k k k k k k come on, Sam, come on, Cody. Next up, we have senior Dennis Neal. Now, Dennis spoke very eloquently until he actually listened to what he said. Dennis Neal, number 94, and this team is the best team I've ever known. It's the only team I've ever known, but. Dennis, this is the best team I've ever played on. Of course, it's the only team I've ever played on. Let me give you a piece of advice, Dennis. Don't use that philosophy in other areas of your life. For example, when you go out on a date, don't tell the young lady, you're the prettiest girl I've ever dated. Of course, you're the only girl I've ever dated. Come on, Dennis, come on, man. And kind of to close things out, we'll have a, a, the senior introduction of one of the guys who's never at a loss for words, Mr. Eloquence himself, the man behind the mullet, Jay Underwood. I'd like to give a shout out to my parents, God, and uh, all my teammates and coaches. For them, they, I wouldn't be here and be as you know talented as I am. And so talented, Jay Underwood. Um, are we going to have to change your nickname from Mr. Mullet to Mr. Humble? Good job, Jay. Come on, man. And I'm sad to say that that's pretty much going to wrap up this year's version of Come On, Man. 
One thing I did learn this year, and I think it's great in a way, maybe it's not great, I have to ask the coaches, but it seems like the players were, were more interested in getting on, come on, man, than they were getting on the highlight clips. But you know what? Hey, we've got to laugh at ourselves. If we don't, then life's no fun. So guys, remember this. Um, next year, always remember that there's always a camera looking at you. i got my eyes on you. And don't get offended when you show up on Come On, man. you got to pull on those big boy panties and just be tough about it. We're not trying to offend anybody. So seniors, a special thank you to you. You guys are a special class, and I really do appreciate what you've done for this school and this program and for the friendship you've shown me. You guys are great. So once again, one, one final reminder. Help me make it go viral. Remember that dance. Come on, man.